In ancient times, there was a mighty warrior who fought for truth about video games, the good, the okay, and the terrible. Then suddenly the warrior fell into a deep slumber, leaving many games yet to be reviewed. Now, in the year 2016, the warrior has been awakened by a black cat and an Austrian action star who made a deal with the forces of the internet. I'm sure we can work out some sort of an agreement. After 500 years, the warrior has now been awakened. <laughs> to review a game that originally came out in 2009. It wasn't on a Nintendo system then. True. That was two years ago. Oh, for fuck's sake. You want me to review this game or not? Please do. Alright then. This is Bayonetta for the Wii U. The story is about a war between Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbran Witches of Darkness. At the center of it all is Umbran Witch Bayonetta, who must kill angels in order to not get dragged into hell. Her main objective, though, is to recover her lost memory and discover who she really is. There's a lot more to this 16 chapter long story than what I described, and it can be a bit hard to follow. But it's still an interesting story with a good central character. Bayonetta starts off with this mix of confidence, toughness, attitude, and selfishness, but as the game progresses, you see more of her real self that does care for other life, making her character more three-dimensional, thus more interesting to follow. Graphically, this Wii U port of a 7th gen game looks pretty good. Its visual quality is about the same as the 360 version, and aside from occasional instances, it does a great job of maintaining a smooth frame rate of 60 frames per second. Given how incredibly flashy this game is, and I do mean really freaking flashy, this is an impressive feat for a port. Wii U owners can rejoice that we didn't get the PS3 version's frame rate. The cutscenes are well animated, except for some of them that seem to make an odd choice. Many of the cutscenes have this slideshow or comic book animation to them. I'm sure it was deliberate, but it has this look of, we ran out of budget for cutscenes. Otherwise, the game throws a lot of explosions, bursts of blood, and other massive visual effects at you throughout the experience. Bayonetta herself is well designed, and it's pretty clear that her sex appeal is the reason for her design choices. Hello, cutie pie. Cutie pie? That sounded a bit pervy. I'm not a pervert! Anyway, audio is well put together for this game with good voice acting, even if a bit over the top, hard hitting sound effects, and high energy music. Your first fight is carried out to a fast Bayonetta mix of Fly Me to the Moon, demonstrating some of this game's unique style. If you don't have a problem with the general over-the-top feel of the game, you can further appreciate the fitting music composition and the fact that the developers actually have the angels speaking Anakian, the language of angels according to some mythology. As you can tell from the footage, the game's primary focus is heavily on combat. Fighting the various foes is a bit like playing Super Smash Bros. The basic controls of jumping, striking, and dodging are simple, yet only skillful players will be able to pull off big combos. Though Bayonetta is powerful, the game is pretty difficult and will force you to have quick reaction times. You dodge multiple attacks and hit your enemies back with her four guns and her combos of punching and kicking. And so many fights take place on the kind of arenas you'd expect to find in an anime. Fight on the road, in a church, or in the mines of Moria! Just kidding, it's only an underground pit. As you progress through the game and win more fights, you earn halos which can then be used to buy items at the gates of Hellbar. This offers some strategy to the game rather it being a simple, over-the-top beat-em-up. You can purchase health items, new weapons, new techniques, and items to improve other areas of your magic and fighting abilities. After unlocking new weapons, you can customize what weapons to have equipped, and if they're arm or leg weapons. So you can find the right combination that works for you. Then you can continue to fight bad guys in Bayonetta's signature style. Beautiful. Now there is actually some exploration in between the fighting which helps to not let the player feel so overwhelmed with all the big action scenes. You walk through parts of town, buildings, and other dimensions finding some items, taking in the sights, and solving relatively simple puzzles. This is all good additions to the game to help its pacing, but it may not be enough for some action adventure fans since the game is still very linear. To top off the epic combat, there are a number of massive boss fights. It's fairly simple to figure out how to hurt them, so the focus is instead on reacting fast so they don't kill you first. These bosses are exciting tests of the experience you've gained so far using Bayonetta's combat abilities and magic, but I also felt like the large scale of the normal fights sometimes made the boss battles less climactic than they could have been, which slightly works to the detriment of the game. With all the combat, the game loves to work in ridiculously big anime-style effects. I mean, look at this! Angels are attacking with musical instruments. Bosses have multiple heads attacking you. Bayonetta is summoning demons from hell to finish off the big foes by apparently blowing off her clothes that are made of hair. 
She's what? Yes, you heard that right. But that brings me to Bayonetta's witch magic as a lot of her more powerful techniques rely on it. And quite frankly, the magic all helps this game to stand out from other third-person action games. After dodging an attack just right, you're thrown into witch time where you can attack your foes at a faster pace until time returns to normal. And when you've built up enough magic from skillful kills without getting hurt, you can perform these elaborate torture spells on an enemy to severely drain their health or finish them off in gory, albeit comedic, fashion. Then there's the ability to turn into different animals like a crow for brief flight or a panther for speed. Well shit, I wish I could transform into a panther. I'd never be late to get anywhere again. I'll be late for my audition. Time to use magic. Transform! <laughs> Damn it. Knowing my luck, that would happen. But something I'm definitely not a fan of with this game is all the quick time events. They do make sense for the feel of the game, but I still felt there were too many. And what was worse was buttons for jumping or other actions suddenly changing just for quick time events without much time for you to notice the change. But many people can't help but wonder, what does the Wii U gamepad bring to this game? Well, actually a decent amount considering this is a port. Along with off-TV play, you can execute some moves by swiping across the touchscreen. And in some sections, like this motorcycle chase, you have the option of steering and jumping with the gamepad's motion controls. I'm glad to see that Platinum actually took the time to implement these features, though most of the time I found it easier to just play the standard way. Bayonetta is set up in a way that encourages replay value. After beating the story, you can replay any chapter to find all the items and get higher scores on the various difficulty settings. Doing all this helps you unlock certain bonus features like hidden boss fights and challenges. If you can't get enough of this type of action, you'll love replaying this game for long periods of time. Otherwise, playing more than one chapter in any given sitting does start to make the action feel stale. But again, it's all a matter of preference. And of course, being that this game was made as a special Nintendo version, it includes more Nintendo features unlocked from the get-go. Four costumes for Bayonetta of Link, Peach, Daisy, and Samus, with each one having appropriate aesthetics and abilities. The princesses can summon Bowser limbs to strike at enemies, Samus can shoot lasers from her arm cannon plus open and close her visor during cutscenes, and the Link costume adds Zelda-themed music bits and collectibles. Take note, third parties, if you bring a game to a Nintendo console late, this is how you do it the right way. On that note, this whole game is an example of how to bring a third-party game onto a Nintendo system that's already been released. And given that you can get this game plus the Wii U exclusive sequel for the total price of one new game, it's worth picking up for Wii U owners who crave big action games with magic and intriguing stories. Well that's my review of Bayonetta. Until my Bayonetta 2 review comes out, check out my previous reviews of Tomb Raider Legend and Beyond Good and Evil for the GameCube. See you all next time.